Welcome to the Mavens of Marketing, a weekly podcast hosted by me, Rachel Durkin. And me, Carrie Barrett. We talk all things marketing, innovation, sales, and business growth strategies, and the standard tried and true marketing techniques. Come for the conversation, stay for the savvy insights. And the borderline inappropriate jokes. audience. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Mavens of Marketing. I'm Carrie Barrett, along with my lovely co-host and partner, Rachel Durkin. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hi, Carrie. It's so wonderful to see you through the camera, as always. One of these days, we'll get back to being able to do this stuff in person, but... We could not wait that long to talk to Miss Jen Gottlieb of Super Connector Media. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. You guys are amazing. This has already been super fun and the listeners didn't even get to enjoy the first half of this podcast. Uh, that was just between us, but I'm, I'm super stoked for this. It's gonna be cool. You know what? There's a very good chance that we'll go off the rails again at some point. And I was just noticing, Rachel, Jen has a sign behind her that says the extra mile is never crowded. That's you and your now fiance, Chris, right? That is. And that's, yeah. we always say that. And one of our amazing clients, nephews made that for us. Aww. It was so cute. So yeah, the extra mile is never crowded. So, true. so for the audience who may not know exactly who you are and why you and your partner, Chris, fiance and partner, Chris, Um, are like the powerhouses of the PR world and industry. Tell us all about you guys and Super Connector Media. Yes. Well, Super Connector Media has been around for only three years. So we are, yeah, and we've like gone skyrocketed very, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it started off as, well, before I even go into how it started off, you guys probably don't even know what it is. It's a PR and marketing company. So we help some of the world's biggest personal brands, tech startups, small businesses uh, get in the media. So TV, podcasts, radio, online, print, publications, absolutely everywhere so that they can make a bigger impact, become the leading expert in their space, get more leads, make more sales, become the authority and get that credibility that they need. For people to be like, hell yeah, I want to work with you because so-and-so said you're awesome, so I believe it. Um, and I saw them on the Today Show. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then we have a whole other arm of our company. So we have the, the PR agency, and then we have what we call the B-Suite, B-E. So we have the B on TV Bootcamp, the B-Scene Accelerator, and the B-Connected Collective, which are all programs that help people be visible, help people be seen. So maybe someone that can't afford to hire us for our high level PR agency, they can go in and they can learn how to pitch themselves, how to market themselves, how to do their messaging and how to get yourself out there. So let me ask you this, what is it about TV that's so magical? And I I don't want to focus exactly on that because PR expands, it's radio, it's digital, it's print, it's it's podcasts, they're, they're, but they're, your Be On TV challenge speaks to sort of the magic of TV, if you will. Uh, yeah, I mean, think about it. So if you, let's say you are debating on who you want to hire. Let's say you're going to hire a life coach. Let's say a life coach, right? You're like, oh my God, my life is screwed up and I need a life coach. And you get, right? So you get three or four referrals from your friends, okay? And you're Googling. What do you do? The first thing that you do is you Google. All right, I'm going to Google these life coaches. And you start searching. And let's say you, you've got two that you're narrowing it down. You see one life coach and they both of these life coaches charge the exact same amount of money. They both get amazing results. They both got great referrals from friends. But one of them, when you Google them, They've been featured on all this media. They've been on TV a whole bunch of times. They've been on CNBC commenting on this thing that happened and talking about how to, you know, de-stress during coronavirus. They were on the Today Show talking about their book that they wrote. They were on this, on that. And the other one, they look great and they've gotten great reviews, but they have no media. Yeah. Who are you going to pick? It's an absolute no-brainer. The credibility and the authority that comes from TV, it's just a weird switch that gets Mm-hmm. in someone's brain. It's not even a conscious thing. Oh, I, I, so, I sort of describe it as this. Sorry, Rachel, I didn't mean to cut you off and jump in, but I sort of describe it as when I'm talking to people about the power of PR and, and it goes along with marketing, we're going to talk about that credibility and all that good stuff. I, I describe it as if somebody were to enter your home at three in the morning, perch themselves on the dresser at the end of your bed and start talking to you about the day's news and what happened overnight, 
you'd probably escort them the F out of your house, perhaps with a baseball bat or run. worse, right? <laughs> and then you'd call the police. But what TV does is it allows it allows those people to A, come into your house in the middle of the night if you want to. They sit in your bedroom. Hell, they sit in your bathroom sometimes. And you trust them. That's why you've A, let them in. But you trust them simply because their mug is on TV. And you know that they have already been vetted. Somebody yeah. else has done the hard work of figuring out that these people know what they're talking about and therefore are qualified to speak about whatever it is that they're speaking of. Yes. Yeah. So, do you guys so in the world? Yeah, go ahead, Rachel. I was say, in the world of marketing, we we call that like this the touch process, right? It takes seven to nine or nine to thirteen touches to build trust in a brand or a person, and PR is such a great way to automate that touch process to the masses. My question for you is, what is an appropriate expectation to set with clients on timeline? Because I have so many clients that come to me and they're like, oh, I want, I want a direct ROI. That's not going to happen. Right. So, you know, there's a process you've got to build up, you've got to create credibility. What do you feel like is a reasonable, like what expectations do you set for clients on timeline for PR to really take effect and be impactful? It's absolutely different for everyone. So I've had people that come to our Beyond TV Bootcamp that's had no TV before. They've never even done a Facebook Live before. And they come in and it's amazing. They're like, I'm going to be on Ellen. I'm going to be on the Today Show. That's what I want to be on. I'm like, fantastic. I love that. Yes, you will be. But you got to start somewhere first. Yeah. You can't go from mm -hmm. couch to marathon. It with, especially when it comes to media, you have to build. There has to be momentum. So, you know, if somebody's coming to us with a whole bunch of local. Right? And they've, they've gotten a ton of local television and they've got a lot on their reel and they've been on TV a bunch and their, their social media is popping with all of these different media placements that they've had. Their momentum is going to be a lot quicker than somebody that started from the beginning. But yes, Rachel, there's always a ramp up period, always, especially when you start creating relationships because relationships take time to form. And Carrie, you know this, relationships are the key. That's the unfair advantage when it comes to getting in the media. That's, that's it. It's creating powerful relationships with people and those take time but once you start to get those relationships and once you start to get those placements I always say it's like you know you just turn on the engine and or you just like open the faucet and it starts right. to grow and we always watch our clients like we have charts that we make when they start with us they always go up and up and up and up and up and, and then there's like this spike where it's just like raining in but you got to get that momentum and that's the key so I love that you brought that up Rachel that's such a good point and so I love that that moment of the spike that you mentioned is there, I always say the same thing to our clients and it's always hard to set expectations. So whenever I'm, I, I think of it as like a brand building strategy that, that directly impacts ROI, right? So when you get to that spike, is there a trigger or a, a feeling or like, how do you know when you're almost there? Cause I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with where they get one foot from the finish line and give up, right? So how do you, I guess my question is, is how do you, how do you kind of prevent that? You keep going and you're pleasantly persistent and you don't, and you just understand that every single no is really a yes in disguise, right? And no might just mean not right now. And if you stop, you're never going to get to the not right now. I'm an actress. Like I used to be an actress. I used to audition every day of my life and just heard, heard no all day, every day, five, six, seven, eight times a day. And if I would have quit, then I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now because I mean, my acting career is ultimately one of the things that led me to here. You know, we love the quote, you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So absolutely every single no and every single shitty moment of your life and every single time where you, you pitch and you pitch and you pitch and you don't get anything or maybe you get something crappy and it doesn't turn into what you want it to turn into, those are all really important things that are going to turn into your yes. And if you stop before you hit your yes, that's going to be the faucet that turns it all on, then you're never going to know. Right. So you just have to believe. What are, so if somebody is starting out on this PR venture, uh, what are the best practices? Like how does somebody need to approach this from a newbie standpoint? Someone who's like, okay, Jenna sold me on the value of PR. What is my first, second, and third step? All right. I'm going to give you your first, second, and third step. Your first step is you want to get super clear on where you want to be. I ask everyone, I'm like, okay, great. You want to be in the media. Well, what's a good publication where your clients are reading? Or what's a, what's a good podcast that they're listening to? Or, or what show are they watching? Uh, I don't know. 
the Today Show. Okay, great. That's the only thing that you know. Like you got to go, you got to do your research and you got to make your media hit list. And sometimes your media hit list for what you do is not the big shiny shows. Sometimes it's the more niche publications or the more niche podcasts where your specific clients are watching, reading, listening to. So you want to ask yourself, what's my goal? Is my goal to just be a star? Great, that's an amazing goal. Okay, then go that route. But if your goal is to get more sales, more clients, more customers or leads, more credibility in a certain space, you're gonna wanna target your, make your media targets more geared toward that. So the, the best way that we get clarity or teach people to get clarity is really, really fun and easy because we all feel it all the time. We say to use FOMO or jealousy or envy as fuel or as a tool. So think about someone that when you turn on the television or you scroll social media and you see them getting all this media and they do something similar to you or maybe the same exact thing as you and you're like, I wish that was me, right? You feel that feeling in your gut and you start comparing yourself to them be like, God, how did they get all that? I want all that. Yeah. So take that feeling and say, oh my God, wait a minute. They're painting, paving the way. Take that person's name, put it into Google News, and see every single place that they've been. What articles have they been in and who's writing those articles? Because that person that's writing those articles are writing about what you talk about. What podcasts have they been on? What shows have they been on? The really cool thing about right now is that everything's done via Zoom. So you could literally be on any show that you want all across the country, any local channel, doesn't matter. It's amazing. So there you go. You've got your roadmap by just using the jealousy that you already feel. Maybe you, maybe it's not jealousy, but maybe it's kind of just like, oh man, they're awesome. I want to be like them. Yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. Hell yeah. They're, they're painting the yellow brick road for you. So I absolutely love, 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 love when I see like one, a powerhouse woman that's crushing it. I'm like, what are you doing? I want to do it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then after that step, and you after you figure out what what outlets they are, you start the reach out. Yes, or am I? Are we jumping ahead of things there? So you can, I mean, you can start the research, but reach out. But I would first figure out what your story is and what your tie-in is. Yep. So, um, I'm sorry to break it to you, everybody that's listening, but the media doesn't give a shit about you yet. They don't care about you. Right. They care about what? They care about their story. Yeah. Or their audience, right? Their audience. Their yep. audience cares about. They care about their viewer, their listener, their reader. And what do they care about? Well, they usually care about what's going on in the world right now. If it's a news channel, right, Carrie? You know this. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. What will the audience find helpful? What do they need to know to make their lives better that day, or safer, or whatever it is? A thousand percent. And the biggest mistake I see people make is they're like, "Okay, my story is hi, I'm Jen Gottlieb, and you want to know all about me and my life and what I do." No, <laughs> you're out how what you do ties into something timely in the news so you can craft your pitch that has to do with something that will help the viewers, readers, or listeners. Yes. So you want to figure out your timely news hook and your topic and your messaging. That's first. And, and, and the really cool thing to do to tie it in to what you do is to, we always say to pay attention to when people lean in when you're talking to them. So mm -hmm. lean in the stories. So yes. you know when you're talking to someone, this is great for just overall marketing and messaging too, Rachel. Like, you know, when you're having a conversation mm -hmm. with a friend or maybe someone you just met and like all of a sudden they start like doing something else or like their eyes glaze over or they start like Googling something online and you can tell they're not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't tell those stories. So you pay attention and those stories go in the bucket of don't tell them. But then when you say mm -hmm. something and someone goes, oh, really? Mm -hmm. They're paying oh, attention. That's a lean in story. That's something that the media probably wants to hear too. And they're usually not the stories that you think are cool are the cool ones. So that's why you have to pay attention to when other people lean in, not to what you think is interesting because mm -hmm. it's close to you. When do other people pay attention? You've got your lean in stories and combine them with something timely that's happening in the news right now. And you have a super power pitch that the media will probably want to hear about. You've got your media targets and then you've got your story that you're going to tell or your pitch. And then we'll go to the next step. But Rachel, you're breathing. And I think you're going to ask. Something. I was breathing. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'm having that kind of day. I might not be. So I love what you're saying because it's funny and from a marketing strategy. I've always focused on, well, pre covidia the land of Covidia, I have put focused on, you know, always being proactive, you know, planning eight weeks ahead, having, having the hook prepared or the message or the positioning strategy, understanding the client pain. It's a little different than PR because it's more 
purposeful and planned and then the PR elements come into it. But since the land of COVIDia, I focused so much on this concept of micro planning, always only handle, only figuring out the hook four to six weeks out, or maybe even three weeks out and then checking and rechecking right before you go to market. And it, it almost feels to me from what you're saying, which I love that PR has always been that way. It's always, you have to pay attention at that moment. And so you almost can have this, some like an evergreen topic or concept that's your you, but you've got to constantly be repositioning it or we all love the word pivot to tie into what's happening at that moment in the media. Does that, is that right? Thousand percent, yes. So you can have an evergreen pitch and that's great. And that's going to be great for some outlets, for some publications, but really like you've got your core story and your core messaging, but then like, let's say you're, um, you're a matchmaker. Valentine's day is going to be your timely news. Mm -hmm. right? Like you could do 85 pitches for Valentine's day, or, you know, there's a national holiday for absolutely anything. There's national donut day, national dog day. National that one's my favorite. I don't know. There's so many. And how can you tie in what you do to what's going on in the news right now? Or even better, something happens. Uh, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are getting a divorce, whatever it is. You could be the commenter if you are a, a, a love coach or, you know, a relationship counselor, come in and be the person that talks about it. So what's something that you could say about that to tie in what you do into what's happening in the news right now? Or like I'm a body language expert and I've been watching their, their last two months of interviews and I've seen how they've been moving apart. And here's what body language says about how the person you're speaking to is feeling and what, I mean, there's, you're right. There's so many great elements and, you know, you just have to be looking for what is timely and unique in that moment. Exactly. But let's also remember, and this is why Jen is so good at what she does, that while one important factor is the hook and the angle, the other one is the relationships you have, right, Jen? You've got to know the right people. The third step, that's how we're going. We've got the clarity, we've got the story, and now we've got, we're going to go downstream here. So the biggest, I know I set that up for you. <laughs> I love easy shit. Let's make it easy. Okay. People go the hard way. You know, the hard way is finding an email address and cold emailing a million people. Okay. Hard way. I can tell you from the other side, it's just delete, 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 delete. Thousand percent. You guys get thousands of emails. A thousands. day. Thousands a day. Yeah. yeah. So why would you open up my email if you don't know who I am? You're not going to, you're going to delete it. But if you know who I am and you have a connection to me or someone that you know really well introduced you to me, you're going to open my email. Yes. So every single person that's listening to this podcast right now has more relationships in the media than you even realize already in your network. Mm -hmm. You just don't even know. And I've got an amazing tool. Will you guys let me teach it? I think that the people listening will freaking love this yes. to be able to tap into your network immediately and get in the media in within at least 20 days if you do it it, it works every single time okay yes. so yes this is called <laughs> top 20 list so once you've got your your goal like your media goal like let's let's you write your goal on the top of a piece of paper so let's say your goal is to get let's let's play big Let's say your goal is to get on the Today Show. You've got lots of local. You've already done some national. You're crushing it. So you're at the level where you could be on the Today Show, okay? Let's just say that. You're going to make four columns on a piece of paper, all right? Four columns like this. First column, you're going to do a dump list of 20 people that you know in your life network. So not just your work network or your business network or your whatever, your whole life, anyone you've ever known, your kids, friends, parents, people you went to high school with, college with, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, anybody that you know that knows someone that's connected to the Today Show or that is directly connected to the Today Show yeah. or maybe that knows someone that's been on the Today Show. Any connection, someone that you know, you're going to make 20, a list of 20 names. You may say, Jen, I don't know 20 people. Yes, you do. Go into your Instagram, your Facebook, go into the contacts in your phone. I've got like 500 contacts in my phone. And at some point, these people were my friends. So they are people. <laughs> Maybe I don't know them now, but it doesn't matter. So the next thing is like, oh, I can't write their name down. I don't really know them. I haven't spoken to them in ages. Doesn't matter. Write their name down. Okay. We're not even there yet. Next column on the top, you're going to write influence. You're going to rank each human being on a scale of one to 10 on how influential they are in getting you what you want. Okay, so for me, let's say I wrote Carrie down because I know Carrie's got some, some ins at the Today Show. She must. She's in entertainment, right? So let's say I said, oh, oh Carrie, who do you know at the Today Show? Oh, your friend like stays over your house all the time that works at the Today Show, right? So I would say that's your best friend. 
good memory. I do. She sees in your place all the time. Yeah. I would say that you are probably a nine on the influence scale on how influential you are in helping me with that relationship because it's your bestie, right? But let's say it's someone that, you know, like maybe uh, your cousin, uh, your cousin's friend kind of knows someone that was on today's show once. Okay. Maybe that's like a one on the influence scale. Okay. Next column, you're going to write help on the top and you're gonna rank that same person on a scale of one to 10 on how likely they are to help you. So Carrie, I would say we got a good relationship. I would say you're pretty likely to help me, right? You'd be like- I'm in. Yeah, nine or 10, right? Yeah. I think that's an amazing relationship, right? Okay, so then in the last column, you're going to put grand total score for each person. So you're gonna add up the influence score, the help score. So Carrie, I'd say we're like a 19 or a 20, right? And then I'm gonna have other people that are lower or higher or whatever. I'm gonna sort those scores from highest to lowest, meaning the people with the 20s, the 19s, the 18s, they're at the top. People with the lower scores, not so influential, don't really wanna help me, they're at the bottom of the list. Yep. So then we're gonna go down this list one at a time and we're going to reach out. Now, here's how we're gonna do that. The people at the top of the list, they're our friends. They're influential. They wanna help us. They're the Carrie Barrett's of the world, right? I'm gonna call up Carrie, I'm gonna carry. I wanna get on the Today Show. I have an amazing timely pitch. Please, who can you connect me to? You know, come on, girl. You're just going to ask. And Carrie, you'd be happy to help me because you're my friend, right? And we know yeah. we and that's why you have a high score, okay? So those people are going to be excited to help you. So don't worry about asking. Don't feel weird about it. You're safe. They've got high scores. People yep. with lower scores, instead of asking them for help, these are the people that maybe you haven't spoken to in a while. You don't know that well. They're not that influential. Instead of asking them for something, you are going to do one thing to provide value to that person. You're going to do something and you're not going to ask them what they need because that's giving them a homework assignment. I hate that. You're going to figure out what's something you could do to help that person. Do they have a podcast? Could you review it? Could you share it? Could you comment on their stuff? Could you send them a gift for something that happened in their life? Could you connect them to somebody that could be a powerful connection? What could you do to provide value to them? That's it. That's all you need to do because you're going to start to slowly build up those relationships. If you work that list, I promise you, you can do it with media, you can do it with whatever the hell you want, getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend sales. <laughs> You'll get whatever it is you want. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying that today as soon as I get off this call. It's so good. You're going to be at the top of my influence list. Both. That's of you. such a brilliant strategy, even for general sales, but I'm definitely thinking about creating a dating app now. <laughs> Based on that algorithm. <laughs> it's really good. I, I absolutely love it. So let me ask you this. How do you find, and I know we're, like, I could talk to you forever, and I know we're coming up on time in a little bit, but I, two things I want to ask you about. How does marketing and PR, how do they work hand in hand, number one? And I want you to talk about when it comes to figuring out what your story is, you guys have a saying, and I, I, everybody knows what it is. It starts with mess, and I want you to just talk about that. That saying, what it means, and how the two things tie together when it comes to branding and PR. Love I mean, it. marketing and PR, excuse me. Marketing and PR are, they come to, they're, they're the, like, they're, they're this. They're peanut butter. Hand in the glove. Yes, they, they make love all day, every day, okay? Because 20% of the value of the media, whatever you get, is the actual thing. 80% is what you do with it afterwards. It is so important. It doesn't matter. You could be on the Today Show. You're on the Today Show for six minutes. If no, whoever saw it, saw it, but then it disappears. You need to take that thing and you need to market the shit out of it so that everybody can see it and you can use it for that credibility, that authority. You can use it in your yeah. followers, for your sales, um, on sales emails. You can use it in paid ads. You can use it on social media. You can use it in emails. You can use it wherever. So amplification is crucial. It's key. And the saying that you wanted me to say, there's so many sayings. We, we love both. I, know. I see them all around you, but this one I think is so important when people are figuring out their story because people tend to shy away from the shit that's hard to talk about. And that's not what they should do. Your mess is your message. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the most horrible things in your life. It just could mean some of the things that maybe you don't really like to talk about because you feel like they don't have anything to do with what you do right now. A great example of that is for me, I was on a heavy metal rock and roll talk show on VH1 for 14 seasons. And for years, I never wanted to tell anybody that. But we talked about lean in stories at the beginning of this call. Anytime I talk about that, people are like, really? Tell me about that. That's cool. What? 
right? Like Rachel's laughing. She's probably like, whoa, I didn't know that. Like, that's cool. That's amazing. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> that was a lean in. And so Chris was like, you have to talk about that. I'm like, it has nothing to do with what I do now. The second that I started talking about that and tying it into what I do now, it gave me that credibility. It gave me that lean and it gave me that story that's different. It's a little messy. It's a little out there, right? It's, it's not your norm. People pay attention, right? Or how this teacher went from being in the classroom to a seven-figure uh, entrepreneur. Or how, you know, this entrepreneur went from being $750,000 in debt, we had an article in one of our clients, to, you know, being, you know, making $1.2 billion or whatever. Um, like, you want to hear the transformation. You want to hear the juicy part. So your mess is your message. Yeah. Well, you know why that's so important is because whether it's marketing or sales, we all buy or engage based on emotion, whether we want to say it or not, whether you're in business or personal it, we're all doing things because of an emotional impulse. And we like, know, and trust people who also suck at things, <laughs> who also are not so good at something, who also have had a past because we all have. And just sitting around pretending everything's perfect, everybody's walls are up. The second you share about something that you're not so proud of or show some vulnerability, you open yourself up to opportunity, right? Which is kind of an, you know, counterintuitive to what a lot of our instincts are. Thousand percent. Yeah, no, people don't like watching perfect people. I, I don't because I'm not perfect. It just makes me angry. <laughs> so yeah. I want to hire someone that understands my struggles, that understands, you know, my fears and my objections, which is that brings me to this is a really cool tip on how to leverage media to talk to your ideal customers' objections. So we talked about leveraging and amplifying the media that you get. So there's, you know, the typical thing that people usually do is they're like, I was on. Today show, you know, yay, look at me. Okay, that's great. And you can do that the first time and people will be very excited for you and they will comment a lot and share and that's great. But the next time you do it, you can't really say, look at me, I was on this. So right. how do you share it? We like to share it with telling a story. Now here's where it gets really juicy because people love stories, right? That's what you just said, Rachel. They love like uh, really relatable stories. Think about what your ideal customer's objection is to working with you. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they're nervous. Maybe they don't think they're good enough. Maybe they um, don't want to spend the money or they don't have the time or they don't have whatever. So what if you wrote a story about getting that media segment all about th their objections are your objections? Oh my God, I was going to go on this show and then all of a sudden my, um, my zipper of my dress broke. It was it was horrifying. I had to, you know, put on all the pins. And then I felt like I was uh, like, I, I was bursting out of my dress and I just didn't feel completely confident, but I did it anyway. I took action and I did it anyway. And I trusted that on the other side of fear is everything that you want. Right. And you're addressing your ideal customer's objections in a story about you being in the media. So it's going to be like, Oh, it's about saying I was on the show without saying I was on the show right? And telling a story that makes them lean in. So that's how it all comes together when you amplify your media and you connect sales, marketing, and credibility at the same time. You're phenomenal. Like I, I, I learned something despite the fact that I was in the business for 20 years, I always learned some, the news business, not the PR business. I learned something about how PR looks at the media every time I talk to you. I wish we could talk forever, but, but we have to wrap. I have, I have well, first question. Audience, stick around because the last one's juicy. Um, where can people find out more about you, more about your business, if they're interested in finding out how they could potentially become a client or just learning more about your mess? Where do they get all that good stuff? Just go follow me on Instagram. I make it super easy. I'm not going to give you a million calls to action. At Jen underscore Gottlieb. It's one end. Instagram's the place to be. DM me. I'm in my DMs if you want to talk to me and then we can go from there. I actually, I lied. I have two questions. And Rachel, I promise you I'll stop asking her questions after this. <laughs> but Clubhouse, I follow you on Clubhouse and you're like killing it there. Do you find that's an important element of PR? And I know, I know we don't have time to dive super deeply into the answer, but how, how instrumental has it been? I don't, so yes, it's been incredible for me uh, in this window of time where it's really amazing. Can I tell if it's going to be amazing forever? No, right? I don't know that. So I can't give that advice and say Clubhouse is going to be the thing that you need to pour your time into. Um, but all I know is that I've been investing some time in Clubhouse and it has been very, very, very powerful for the time being. It can be a huge time suck. 
It can give you a lot of FOMO. It can give you a lot of mindset stuff. So I'm just going to put it out there that okay. rare, go in with caution. Um, but it can be unbelievably powerful because it's a way to communicate your message in the most authentic way because it's your voice. Right. Okay. Last question. <laughs> Weirdest thing that's ever happened to you. Tell right. our audience something nobody knows about you. Okay. So I don't think I've ever shared this publicly. I've shared this privately at dinners and stuff like that as like a <laughs> Um, but I've never shared it in a public space. So this is really good for you guys. Um, when I was on this heavy metal TV show on VH1, I had a lot of fans that, you know, liked me for like, well, weird reasons. And uh, I got a message. I know them. One of them. And it was, hey, Jen, can you, can I buy a pair of your socks that you've worn after you <laughs> And at this time, I was a struggling actress, not making that much money. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so How I was did you get for them? Socks. socks. I sweat. Was it actually socks? Socks. I swear to God, socks. She's not changing the. <laughs> I swear to God, socks. Sweaty socks. I had to run in them. And then I put them in a package and I sent them and I made $750 for my socks. And then I, whenever I needed money, I would message him and I would say, I, do you want another pair of socks? <laughs> and now you're getting married to him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just snorted. You're insane. <laughs> I mean, I figured I was getting the last laugh. It didn't hurt me. To I, hey, I'm all in, in full support of that entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> there was a market for it and you took advantage. It's perfect. <laughs> I'd like to offer that as a service. I don't know that I would get seven fifty, but I mean, I feel like if it's something I could make a drop down on my website for, I might. You should give it a shot. Talk about it, Jen. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. This was fun. Uh, and and to all of our audience, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Mavens of Marketing. And we will see you back here next week, same time, same place. Bye. It's a teaser. Coming up on the next episode of the Mavens of Marketing, we're speaking with Lauren Ray. If you're familiar with that name, it may be because she used to be part of the Elvis Duran morning show. Yes, she was a radio superstar, but she's gone through a career transition now. And we talked to her about the importance of that personal brand, how you use it as part of your marketing outreach and how you use it to leverage moving from one career to the next on the next episode of the Mavens of Marketing.